Welcome to the Blank Slate Hat Pattern Tutorial. This is a simple and classic hat pattern that knits up super quick with less than one ball of super chunky yarn. This hat is for beginners who can knit, purl, and cast on. If you've knit a scarf and you're looking for a new challenge, then this is it. Quick note about construction, this hat is knit flat and then seamed together at the end. What you'll learn. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to knit this hat from beginning to end. We'll go through how to increase with a KFB, how to knit a gradual decrease, and how to seam with mattress stitch for an invisible join. I'll also show you three ways to jazz up this hat so that it's no longer a blank slate, but a really unique hat that you can customize to suit your taste and personality. Sometimes I'll point you to other tutorials that I've made instead of going through the whole technique in detail. This makes the tutorial more concise. I've made video chapters with timestamps so you can skip around really easily. So download the pattern in the description and let's get into it. I'm using one ball of Rico Design Essentials, super chunky in the color 23. This is a 50% wool, 50% acrylic blend, which is pretty soft and affordable. I'm also using a pair of 10 millimeter bamboo needles. For reference, the gauge for this pattern is 11 stitches and 15 rows equals four inches or 10 centimeters in stockinette stitch. I'll link all these materials in the description. Notions include a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure, and some split ring stitch markers for seaming, which is optional. You'll also need some scrap cardboard for making the pom-pom. An old notebook or even some cards if you're not too sentimental would work just fine. Oh, you'll also need a pair of sharp scissors. All right, so now we are going to cast on. So I kind of assume that you know how to work a long tail cast on. If not, you can click on this video up top, which I'll also link down in the description, um, but we'll just do a quick overview. So I've left um, a nice long tail of yarn here. This is our long tail. And then I've made a slip knot and placed it onto my needle. The yarn tail um, is in the front of my work. Okay, this bunch here, is in the front and in the back is the yarn that's attached to my ball of yarn. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my left hand and just grab the yarn, okay? And then I'm going to use my thumb and my index finger to kind of push the yarn apart. All right, move it around, all right, make a little diamond shape. And then I'm going to use my uh, needle to touch my thumb, go into the loop, all right? Turn my hand, go into the second loop, and then back over this loop on my thumb and then pull down, all right? So that's my first cast on stitch and I'm just gonna keep on going, all right? Casting on until I have 49 stitches. All right, so again, the assumption is you know how to do this. You can click on this video um, on the upper right hand corner or down in the description. That will give you a really detailed step-by-step -step overview of the long tail cast on. Uh, right now I'm casting on with the traditional method of the long tail cast on. Uh, and I've also linked down below a thumb method for the long tail. These are two methods to get you this lovely cast on that you see here. All right, so I'm just casting on until I get 49 stitches on my needle. So now I've got 49 stitches on my needle, lovely. And now we're gonna start knitting. If you take a look at your pattern, you'll see that row one in brackets WS, WS stands for wrong side. Um, and then it goes knit one, purl one, repeat two last stitch, knit one. Okay, now if you're wondering why is the first row the wrong side, the reason is this. Okay, so when we knit onto our long tail cast on, you can see that the ridge here, right, that our long tail has left is kind of like a purl bump, you know, a little bit. And if you turn your needle over the other side of your long tail cast on, it's a flatter ridge. Um, so basically we want our hat to sit on this side of our long tail cast on, right? I don't really want this side to be the right side, right? Because it looks sort of, I don't know, bumpy. I'm not crazy about this side, okay? So that's why the first row that we work on this side is gonna be our wrong side, okay? It'll make a little bit more sense as we go along. All right, so let's get into it. Our first stitch is the knit one. Okay, so let's do that. We'll knit one. Okay, and then we're going to purl one. So what we're knitting right now is the one by one rib, okay, or the knit one, purl one rib. That makes up the hat. 
Okay, so I've just done a knit one and also a purl one. And now we're gonna repeat from asterisk to last stitch. So repeat from asterisk just means we're gonna repeat the instructions between the asterisk, which is a knit one, all right? and a purl one. So we're just going to repeat that uh, repeat. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, until we get to the last stitch on our left needle, at which point we are going to knit one. All right, so work this first row with me doing a knit one, purl one across your whole row. Here's my second to last stitch. I'm going to do a purl and here is my last stitch and I'm going to knit this guy right here. All right, perfect. Cool, so I've just completed my row one. It's a really long row. And now I'm gonna turn my needle over and we're gonna work row two. All right, so row two, this is our right side. And you can see that nice kind of flat ridge right there on our um, long tail cast on. This is gonna be the right side of our hat. Okay, so let's get on to row two. Row two, we're going to purl one. So I'm gonna bring my uh, needle from the top to the bottom of the stitch. My yarn is in the front and I'm going to purl into that first stitch. There we go, there's our first stitch which is a purl stitch, all right? And now we've got the asterisk, knit one, purl one, repeat from asterisk to end of row. Okay, so that means we're going to knit one, okay? And then we're going to purl one, and we're gonna repeat that knit one, purl one configuration to uh, until we get to the end of our row, okay? So that's pretty much all there is to it, pretty easy. Right, we just did a purl one. Now I'm going to do a knit one and a purl one. Okay, so here's a really easy way to do row two. That doesn't involve you chanting knit one, purl one, okay? Cause that's pretty boring. Okay, so here's a way you can do row two really easily. Just take a look at the stitch that is on your left needle, okay? So this next stitch on my left needle is a knit stitch, and the stitch after it, this guy right here, is a purl stitch. And I can tell because the knit stitch looks like a little V shape, and the purl stitch looks like a little bump. So right after that, this third stitch here, this is a knit stitch because it's got a little flat V shape, and the stitch right after it, this guy right here, is a purl stitch because of that little bump, right? So take a look at these four stitches. You can tell pretty quickly, this is a knit stitch, this is a purl stitch. This is a knit stitch, this is a purl stitch. So what we would do is if you see a knit stitch, you would knit into it, okay? So this stitch is a knit stitch, so I'm going to knit into it. There we go. The stitch right after it is a purl stitch. So I'm going to bring my yarn up front and purl into that guy, all right? The stitch right after is a knit stitch. So we're gonna knit into it, okay? And the stitch right after is a purl stitch. So bring the yarn up front and purl into that stitch, okay? So that's pretty much all you need to do for row two. And this little tip that I've just given you is gonna come uh, in handy when we do the rest of our rib. Just remember the tip that you're gonna knit into the knits and purl into the purls, okay? So that way you don't need to remember knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one as you work row two. Got just two stitches left on my left needle, so I'm going to knit that and here's my last stitch and I'm gonna purl it. Cool, so I have just completed my first two rows, the wrong side and the right side. And now I'm back onto the wrong side. Okay, so let's take a look at our pattern. It says repeat rows one to two until piece measures three inches and having worked a row one. Okay, so all this means is we're gonna go right back to the beginning and work row one again. Okay, so we're gonna alternate between row one and row two until our work measures three inches uh, measured from the cast on edge up, okay? Now, this doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think it is, okay? Because rows one and rows two follow this basic principle. Knit the knits and purl the purls. If you remember this, then you are good for this one by one rib. 
all that means is that you are going to knit the knits and purl the purls, okay? So continue rows one and rows two, or just continue knitting the knits and purling the purls until your piece measures three inches. It is slightly over three inches, but that's okay. All right, so our pattern says that we need to end having worked row one. That means that our last row should be row one, and our next row, or this row, should be row two. Row two is a right side, and if we take a look at our uh, cast on end, you can see that this is the right side of our long tail cast on. This side is the wrong side, okay? You can see that little purled edge, okay? So we want to work our next row on the right side and that is correct. So that means that now we're ready to work the increase row. All right, so now we're ready to work our increase row. So it starts by doing a knit one. Cool, easy enough. And then we're gonna do what's called a KFB. Now KFB stands for knit through the front and back loop. This is an increased stitch, so we're gonna increase by one stitch. All right, so it goes like this. We're going to knit into this next stitch, but we're not gonna drop the stitch off, okay? Instead, we're going to leave the stitch on our needle, and then we're gonna knit into the back of this stitch. So here we go. I'm just going to knit into the back of it, and you can kind of see, there you go. You can kind of see that we're now into the back of the stitch. I push my needle in, I'm gonna wrap my needle with the yarn and then pull out a second stitch and then drop it off the needle. Now you can see that I have increased by one stitch, right? Okay, so let's do that again. I'll just drop the yarn off, put it back onto the needle and now we've got one stitch, one knit stitch and now we're gonna work our KFB into this guy. So here we go, we'll knit Okay, and instead of dropping this stitch off the needle, we're going to continue to knit into the back of the stitch. So here we go, you can see I'm pushing it into the back of that same stitch. Here's another view. All right, and then we're gonna use our yarn to wrap it around the right needle and pull that yarn through, thereby creating a second stitch, okay? So this is a KFB. Okay, let's move on. So. Our increase row, we're just going to knit to the end of the row and in brackets 50 stitches. So we've increased one stitch through our KFB and that's why our stitch count has gone from 49 all the way to 50. So continue knitting till you get to the end of the row and that will complete your increase row. All right, so row one, wrong side, we're going to purl all of the stitches. Okay, that's easy enough. We're on the wrong side of our hat, and that's why we are purling all of our stitches. On the right side of our hat, we're going to knit all of our stitches. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that once we finish this row, but for now, we're going to purl all of these stitches. And there we go. All right, cool. So that was my row one of stockinette stitch. Now I'm going to turn my needle over and now I'm on row two, which is also the right side of my hat. So row two is even more simple than row one. Row two is just knitting all of the stitches. Cool, so now I'm just going to knit all of my stitches. Pretty awesome. Since we're doing such a simple row, I'm going to move on into the instructions. We'll just talk through them. So the next part of our instruction says, repeat rows one to two until piece measures six inches from cast on edge. So instead of keeping track of row one and row two and are you knitting or purling, just remember to knit the knits and purl the purls. Sounds familiar, right? So if you take a look at this row, you'll see that all the stitches are knit stitches. So we would knit into them. When you flip the work over, you'll see that the stitches are all purls. So you would purl all the purl stitches. Okay, so that's an easy way to remember how to knit stockinette stitch. Knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. That way you won't even need to look at your pattern. So knit stockinette stitch until your whole piece measures six inches. All right, so our row one, we should be on the right side of our work. So that would be the knit side here and not the purl side here, okay? So let's get started. All right, so for row one, we're going to knit three. All right, so here we go. Oops, let's do a knit three. One, 
two and three. And then we're going to do a K2TOG, which stands for knit two together. Now this is a decreased stitch. So we're going to knit into these two stitches and turn these two stitches into one stitch. I'm gonna take my right needle and push it into these two stitches. Okay, you can see there's two stitches here. Then I'll use my working yarn, wrap it around my needle and pull that through and then just drop it off the needle. So now those two stitches, which you can see right here, right? These two stitches have now turned into one stitch, okay? So that's our decrease stitch and knit two together. All right, so now our pattern says that we're going to repeat uh, from the asterisk, right? So the instructions between the asterisk is what we repeat. So let's do it again. We're gonna do a knit three. So one, two, and three. Cool. And now we're going to do a knit two together. So here we go. Here's our next two stitches. And I'm just going to push my needle into both stitches. All right. And then I'm going to wrap my yarn around it, pull it through and off. And that is our knit two together, right? So two stitches have now become one and we've just decreased. Okay. So we would just work this across the whole row doing a knit three and a knit two together, just like that, okay? All right, so work this repeat across the rest of the row, and by the time you get to the end of the row, you will have 40 stitches remaining, okay? So that's from all of the decreases. All right, so now I'm on my last repeat. I'm doing my last knit three. Here we go, knit three. And my last two stitches are gonna be a knit two. Perfect, so there we go. Now I've completed row one of my decrease row. And if I count up all these stitches, I should have 40 stitches. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to row two. Row two of our decrease row says that we need to purl all of our stitches. And it says row two and all even rows, purl all stitches. Now what that means is that from now until the end of our hat, every time we get to the wrong side row or the purl side of our hat, we're just gonna purl all of the stitches. All the decreasing happens on the right side of our hat. Once we get to the wrong side or the purl side, we're just gonna purl everything, okay? So no decreasing happens on the purl side of our hat. So for the rest of the decrease rows, I'm not gonna go over the even rows, which would be the wrong side because we're just purling for those rows, okay? We'll just go over the rows where we have actual decreases taking place. And there's my last purl stitch, great. So now I'm back on the right side of my work and ready to work row three. All right, so row three is pretty similar to row one and it goes like this. We're going to knit two, okay, here we go, knit two, and then we're gonna knit two together. Okay, so here we go. Here's my two stitches on my left needle and I'll just push my needle into those two stitches as if they were one, and then just wrap my yarn around it and pull through. And now those two stitches have become one stitch. All right, and we would just repeat that, okay? Knit two, there we go, and knit two together, okay? So push the needle into these two stitches and just wrap my yarn around and drop it off the needle. Okay, so that is the repeat for row three. Knit two, knit two together, repeat to the end of the row. And by the time you get to the end of the row, you will have 30 stitches. Okay, here we go. Perfect, so now I've just completed row three. And I'm gonna turn my work over, and I'm on the purl side once again, so I'm going to purl all of these stitches. So I finished my purl row and now we're on to row five, which is our right side row. All right, so row five goes like this. We're going to knit one, okay, easy enough. And then we're going to knit two together. So here's our two stitches and we're just going to knit into them, all right, thereby turning two into one. Okay, so that's that's all there is to the repeat. Knit one, knit two together across the whole row. 
By the time we get to the end of our row, we should have 20 stitches. So pretty easy, right? Not too scary. So work row five of the decrease row, and I'll meet you back here for row seven because you know what to do for row eight, which is just purling all of your stitches. So now I've worked row five, and I also worked row six, which was my purl row. And now we're on to row seven, which is the last row in our decrease row. How exciting. All right, so row seven is very simple. It is just knit two together. So here we go. Here's our knit two together, and then knit two together. Okay, so another knit two together, okay? And another knit two together. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> it's basically a knit two together across the whole row, okay? So this is pretty much the last row of our decrease. We are so close to being finished with our hat. Okay, so just work a knit two together across the whole row and then we'll be done. Here we go. Woohoo! So now I should have 10 stitches on my hat and I think I do, two, four, six, eight, 10, perfect. So that means we can move on to our next step which is cutting our yarn and weaving it through these 10 stitches. The knitting portion of our hat is complete. Now we're gonna cut off the yarn and weave it through these 10 stitches. But we're not just gonna cut this yarn anywhere, okay? The yarn is gonna be doing double duty to secure these 10 stitches and to seam our hat. Okay, so we need to measure out a length of yarn that is enough to seam our hat together. And how that works is we're just gonna take a length of yarn and measure out the seam that we're gonna do we're gonna measure out three times that seam. Okay, so let's see. Our seam is going to be here, right, all the way down. So here's one length, here's eh, like two lengths, and here is about three lengths, okay? So there we go. This should be enough to seam closed our hat. All right, so I'm just gonna leave a little bit more yarn because I'm super paranoid about not having enough yarn and just cut off that length of yarn. All right, so now I've got my tapestry needle here, and a tapestry needle just looks like a giant sewing needle, and I'm going to put this yarn onto my tapestry needle, and now I'm just going to push this tapestry needle through these 10 stitches. I just wanna secure these stitches. I'm gonna turn the needle around like this. We're gonna get the tapestry needle, and I'm just going to push the tapestry needle into these 10 stitches. So I'm almost kind of taking them off of the needle with the tapestry needle, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna pop it off like this with our tapestry needle. Just push it off, okay? On the tapestry needle and off the needle. On the tapestry needle and off the needle. Okay, so I'm just kind of pulling them off by placing them on the tapestry needle. And here's our last stitch, great. So I'm gonna put the needle aside, whoops, get these stitches back onto my tapestry needle. And now I'm just gonna pull the tapestry needle through. And you can see that now our 10 stitches are safely on this length of yarn and we are ready to seam our hat together. Before we get to seaming, I've got a little bit of a hack for you. So we've got this yarn that we're going to seam our hat up with. Now I'm gonna take the needle off for a minute. Now, if the yarn that you used was a single ply yarn, meaning that it's just a big fluffy kind of tube of yarn, it doesn't have an extra twist, then your yarn is actually gonna be kind of uh, delicate and a little bit unstable. So what I like to do to strengthen my yarn, if it's a single ply yarn like this, is to add a little bit more twist and strength into my yarn. So by rolling it between my hands, I'm also felting it, which will give the yarn more strength when we're seaming. So I'll do this across the whole length of yarn, just give it a bit more oomph. All right, so at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that split ring stitch markers could be helpful for seaming, and this is where they come in. Now, you don't have to use these guys. They're just a nice way to keep your steaming organized. If you don't have split ring stitch markers, you can use like a safety pin or maybe even a bobby pin would work. But basically, these guys are helpful in this way. So when I seam, I want to make sure that by the time I get to the bottom part of this hat, I want 
the edges to be perfectly aligned. I don't want one edge to be a little bit higher, right? So what these stitch markers will do is pin our fabric so that it's aligned as we are seaming almost like pin it in place. That's kind of the same concept as when you're sewing. I can put in as many of these stitch markers as I like, and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not counting stitches or counting rows or anything like that. So I'm gonna continue pinning it on the stockinette side. Here we go. And I think that's probably enough. Now let's talk about mattress stitch, which is how we'll seam our hat together. First, we need to understand the anatomy of a stitch. So when you take a look at a stitch, you can see that it's kind of like a little V-shape, right? And now in between this V-shape, there is a little bar, okay? If you kind of dig into a stitch, you'll see that there's a little bar that runs through that little V-shape. So when we're doing a mattress stitch, we're going into that V-shape and picking out that bar, picking out the bar from the other side, and seaming those bars together. And when we do that, we get a really nice even seam that looks almost invisible. All right, so let's try that now. My uh, working yarn is on the right side, so I'm going to look for a V shape on the left side that's really close to where my yarn is coming through. All right, so here we go. I notice this little V shape right away, right? And I'm gonna push my needle into the V, try to find that little bar. There we go. So here's a little bar that's running between the little V shape. So I'm going to pull my yarn through that V shape. Awesome, and just kind of pull it tightly. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the right side of my fabric now. I just wanna push it down, it's kind of bubbling. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go to the right side of the fabric now and look for a V shape. And it may be a little bit tricky sometimes because you've got your decreases going, but I notice a little V shape right here. Okay, this V shape. So I'm going to stick my needle in there and try to pull out a bar. There it is. So here's the little bar in between my little V shape. So I'm gonna push my needle through there we go. So that's my seam on the right side. Now we're going to go back to the left side and look for a V shape that's kind of close to the edge of our fabric. This V shape looks pretty good. And I found the bar that runs through it and I'm going to pull it through. So now we'll go back to this side and look for a V shape. I like the look of this V right here, so I'll push my needle in and just grab that bar and we'll pull that through. Sometimes you may need to unfurl your um, fabric a little bit because it has a tendency to curl inwards like that. So I do wanna unfurl it, make sure that I have a good, accurate view of it. Here we go, there's a bar right there. Let's seam that up and go over to this side, unfurl it. And I like the look of this V, this guy right here. So I'm gonna grab the bar inside of it. All right. So doing this, it does take a bit of concentration. A lot of it is just kind of eyeballing, okay, to be totally honest. You're just sort of eyeballing where is the closest V in relation to the one that I just seamed. So if you feel like you need a little bit more instruction for seaming with mattress stitch, I'll leave a link below to a video that I made that goes through this technique in more detail. Continue seaming like this until you reach the one by one rib portion of the hat. Once we get to the rib, I have a little bit of a different strategy for seaming, which I will share with you. On one side of our piece, we've got a column of knit stitches, right? And that's normal because we did a knit one, purl one rib, okay? So this guy right here, that's sort of curling, this is a knit column. And on the other side of our fabric, on the right side of our fabric, we have also got a knit column right here, right? This guy. So we basically have a built-in row of Vs, okay? Except that in our case, these are like upside down Vs, right? They're like little arrows that are pointing. Once we get to the rib, instead of looking for Vs, we're gonna be looking for arrows. And we're gonna be grabbing the arrows from this column. And from this column here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab the bars in between those little arrows. So this happens once we get to the rib portion, okay? Not when we're on the stockinette portion. So here we go. 
I'm going to look for the arrow shape on the right piece here and I'm going to go into it and grab that little strand running through it and here it is you can see and I'll bring my yarn through great now we're going to go to the left piece and this column here look for that little arrow I think that it's yeah it's like around here here it is. We're just going to root around here for a little bit. Try and get that arrow. I think it, oh, I think it might be this one. There we go. So I've got the bar there from the little arrow. Pull it through. Okay. So now let's go up. Okay. We're going to go back to the right side. Look for the arrow. Here it is. And there's a little bar. It's almost like just sticking out. I can see it already. And then pull it through. Go back to the left side, look for the little bar in between the arrow. There it is, it's just sticking out there. And pull it through. Now as I'm doing this, I'm also kind of keeping an eye on the uh, the piece to make sure it's kind of aligned, that one piece isn't you know farther up than the other. And they look pretty good at this point. Okay, so let's continue on. So here we're not losing sight of our column of arrows, right? Here we go. So I'm back to the right side. I'm looking for the arrow. Here it is. This is the next one. I'm going to grab the yarn running through it and then go back to this left piece. Look for the arrow and things are getting a little bit, you know, <laughs> crowded right now, but I can still see it. You might need to take a moment, look out the window, look away from your knitting for a little bit because things can get a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit hairy. So here's our next arrow. There we go. Whoops, I think I caught something there. Great. And then the corresponding arrow, I think it's like around here. And look for the arrow here. I think it's this one. Great. And the arrow across from it would be around here. Great. So I've kind of reached my little stitch marker, so I'm just gonna undo it. It's done its job. And we're just gonna continue going up as we're seaming our rib, you can see that the uh, seam comes together perfectly and it really looks like it's just part of the rib, right? If we just pull this apart a little bit, this area just looks like it's part of that one by one rib. All right, so let's keep on going. Now we're at the edge of our cast on. You can see this is the little remnant of our long tail cast on. And I'm just gonna, I think I might be able to get in one more. Yeah, I think I can get in one more stitch here. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna seam it in here. Perfect. Okay, so I feel like I've done a pretty good job with my seam. This is actually where the seam is and it looks perfectly just like a knit column. It looks awesome. And here you go. This is also where our seam was and it's like practically invisible. You can't even tell that there is a seam there. All right, so back at the edge now. And what I'm gonna do is now that the edge looks really nice and flat and aligned, I can actually just turn over my hat and just kind of weave in the yarn into the ends here. So we're gonna ignore this long tail for now. We can do that later. But basically I'm going to seam uh, this yarn, the yarn that's attached to my tapestry needle into the wrong side or the opposite side of our hat. And I'm kind of looking for these little pearl bumps because they camouflage stitches pretty well. So I'm going into them like a couple times and the reason for this is really just to secure our yarn in place. So just looking for a couple of these little pearl bumps. I'll go into about four or five stitches and that should be secure enough. So on the front of our work, it looks pretty good. I can't really see the yarn poking through when we wove it in. So I'll get out my scissors and just snip the yarn off. So we've got this little tail end from our long tail cast on. So I'm going to put it onto my tapestry needle and do the exact same thing with this as I did with our seaming yarn. Turn it over to the wrong side. Look for, well, okay, let's, uh, let's see. Maybe we'll move it over to the other side from where we uh, did our seaming yarn and just look for some pearl bumps. And I'm gonna weave in the ends of this leftover yarn into these pearl bumps. The reason why we're not just snipping it off 
is because I don't want this tail end to unravel, for instance. I just want to secure this in our yarn so it has less chance of unraveling in our work because it's in among all these little stitches, okay? So I've gone into these little bumps four or five times. I'm gonna take my scissor again and just snip it right off. And now our edge of our hat looks beautiful and perfect. Now that we've completed our hat, we're gonna move on to our next step, which is making a pom-pom. Now it's pom-pom time. Okay, so I've cut out these two pom-pom tracers out of some scrap cardboard. This measures like a little bit under three inches and that's gonna give me a nice fluffy pom-pom. Now I'm not gonna go into really great detail about how to make a pom-pom because I have made a really detailed resource all about pom-pom making over here. I'll include a link to this in the description. So follow that tutorial to make the pom-pom of your dreams. So we're just gonna speed through the pom-pom making process. Now my pom-pom tracer is super chubby. I've wrapped it around with yarn a bunch of times. Now I'm just going to cut off that strand of yarn and then cut off another long length of yarn that I'm going to secure my pom-pom with. So here we go. Cool. And just set aside this strand of yarn. And now I'm going to slide my pair of really sharp scissors in between these two pom-pom tracers and then just cut the yarn free so that it can become what it was meant to be, which is a super bluffy pom-pom. Let's get this yarn between these two pom-pom tracers and just tie this. And let's do another knot. And now we can reveal the pom-pom. There we go. And it's this crazy little like wild, <laughs> wild thing. And now I'm just going to trim this guy a little bit, make it into a nice round shape. So I've spent some time trimming my pom-pom into the perfect round shape. And I think it looks pretty good now. Cool, so now let's attach our pom-pom to our hat. Okay, so I've threaded up my pom-pom onto my tapestry needle here, and now I'm just going to stick it right into the top of my hat and pull that pom-pom through, and now you can see it looks so cute. All right, so now I'm going to turn my hat inside out. I'm still holding on to those two strands of yarn. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just take the tapestry needle off of the pom-poms, and I'm going to take these two strands of yarn and then tie it in a knot, okay? Pull it really tightly and do it again. Tie another knot and pull down. Okay, so at this point, our pom-pom is not yet secure. What we need to do is weave these two strands of yarn into our hat a couple times and that should secure our pom-pom pretty well. So I'm going to thread up one of these threads and weave in this strand of yarn into like five or six of these little purl stitches. You know how I love weaving in ends into purl bumps and in the back of this hat, we've got so many purl bumps. Okay, so I'm going in and sort of following the natural line of the stitches. So that seems pretty secure. I've gone into a couple stitches here with this guy, and now I'm gonna move over to this strand of yarn, thread it through the tapestry needle, and then weave it in through four or five stitches near the top of the hat. I feel like that should be pretty secure. Let's turn the hat over to the right side and see whether our pom-pom is secure. And it looks, it looks pretty good. I'm kind of shaking it and it's still staying in place. It's not too bad. So I feel like it's pretty well attached. Let's say that you already wove in the two strands attached to the pom-pom and you feel like it's still not super secure. If you wanna add some extra security to your hat, here's what you can do. Cut off a length of yarn, thread it up, go into the inside of the hat, and then bring your tapestry needle out. We're just looking for one end to come through. Then I'm gonna take the tapestry needle and spread the yarn threads and then stab it right in the middle, okay? Stab the pom-pom right in the heart and then just bring the yarn through. Then spread 
the uh, yarn strands on the other side and then bring the tapestry needle through the top of the hat just like this okay now I'm gonna grab that tapestry needle from the inside and then just tighten it up okay now you can see where we stabbed into our pom-pom there's that strand of yarn there so I'm just gonna fluff up the pom-pom a little bit and hide where that strand of yarn was then I'm going to turn my hat inside out and now we have these two extra strands of yarn. And again, you can do the same thing with it that we did with our original yarns. Tie a knot and then tie another knot and then weave these two strands of yarn into the hat as we did the first time around. So now it should be very, very secure. It should feel really good. It is complete, I can't believe it. <laughs> If you want to jazz up your hat, add in another color, or just give it a little bit of embellishment, I've got you covered. Next, I'm going to show you three ways to jazz up your hat so that it's no longer a blank slate, but a hat that is really personalized to what you like. So that's coming up. So the first way for you to add personality to your blank slate hat is through color. So in this example, I just knit my hat using one color right up until I got to the decrease portion. Once I hit the decrease rows, that's when I switched colors and just knit the rest of my hat in my second color. Color blocking is a fun and easy way to mix colors together in big blocks, hence the name color blocking. Some great combinations are complementary colors. They sit opposite to each other on the color wheel. For example, red and green or orange and blue. Another tried and true color combo is mixing light and dark shades of the same color. For example, pink and red or light blue and dark blue. You can even use the colors from your favorite sports teams or Hogwarts house. Go Ravenclaw! So how this works is that I knit up my hat in one color and then once I got to the decrease rows, that's when I introduced my second color. So for decrease row one, I would literally attach the second color just like this, kind of hold it and knit into the first stitch with my second color and then pick up the yarn uh, with my second color and knit into my second stitch using my second color, right? So the first decrease row is knit three and knit two together. And that's pretty much all that there is to it. I would just continue knitting my hat with my second color. Once you've completed your first row, then you can just snip off the first color, leave a little bit of a tail because we're going to weave these in at the very end, okay? Continue knitting on with your second color. So you might be wondering, what am I gonna do once I finish the hat? I've got these yarn strands here where you join the second color. So all you would do is get your tapestry needle out and thread up those two little yarn strands and then weave them into your uh, fabric. So I would go into the same color, so I'm not kind of mixing the colors as I weave them in. So I'm just going in like four or five times here and then I'm going to just cut it off. Do the same thing with the first color. All right, so now I have a really nice edge where I joined my new yarn and that's all there is to color blocking your hat. So the second way to jazz up your hat is to create a kind of marled effect on your hat. So what I did to achieve the marled look was I had my base yarn, my regular yarn right here, and I held it together with three strands of just black sewing thread. So I just bought two of these at the dollar store and then another bobbin and I just wound the bobbin with more black thread and then just held all three strands together with regular yarn, just like this, and then knit the hat with it, exactly as it's stated in the pattern. To keep everything organized, I'll throw the yarn and threads into a bowl and then cast on like normal and just follow the pattern. So I used three strands of sewing thread to get a darker, thicker color, but feel free to experiment to get the look that you want. When you're knitting, just be sure to knit into the yarn, but also into that little thread that is part of the yarn. So don't just knit into the yarn, because then you're gonna leave the thread unknit. Knit into both the yarn and the thread together. Think of your yarn and the thread as just one big piece of yarn. It's like a Franken yarn that you've created. 
I suggest that you try this marl technique after you're pretty comfortable knitting the blank slate hat. Because if you make a mistake and you need to unravel your yarn, it's just kind of a nightmare with thread and yarn tangled everywhere. So keep that in mind. I love the look of jewels on knitted fabric. I've seen this trend around and it's not hard at all to recreate. So these jewels I got from the craft store and I'm just laying them out in a design that I like. And once I have a cool design, I'll just sew them down. And that's it, easy peasy. When you're choosing jewels, look for ones with a hole in them so that you can sew them into your hat. This is more flexible as you can later change the design and it also prevents you from needing to glue the jewels on your hat, making it permanent, yikes. I also like using appliques. They add a bit of glamour and shine to the hat and who doesn't love that, right? So this big one here looks a little funny in the middle. It's giving off like Superman vibes, <laughs> so maybe not. Ooh, so this one I think will look really cute on the side. So just play around with placement and when you're happy with it, just sew the applique in place. There are a bunch of cute appliques and patches online, so I'll throw some links in the description to my favorite ones. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome hat that you can wear and enjoy. Tag me on Instagram if you knit this hat. I would love to see what you've made. And if you enjoyed this video, then please like it and subscribe for more tutorials like this one. I'm Davina from SheepAndStitch.com. Happy knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye!